Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys all about how we can look more attractive and look more beautiful. If you're new here, hello, my name is Nicole. I typically post content about how we can DIY some parts of our level up journey and look a little bit more polished by doing things at home. But what I love most about that is, is that when you assess which things you can do for yourself and at home, it allows you to then be discerning about what parts of your journey you can't DIY and you need help from others with. So with that, let's get into today's video. Let's talk about how we can be more attractive and more beautiful and just feel the best about ourselves. So the first thing that I want to talk about is there is life and there is death in the power of the tongue. Being able to speak in a way that is going to uplift people, that is going to encourage people and motivate people and be kind is going to be one of the most attractive qualities that you can have about yourself. Haven't you ever notice that sometimes there's certain people that they might not be physically the most attractive but people just absolutely love their demeanor they love their character they love having that person around because they have such an infectious charismatic and kind spirit I think when you have that spirit inside of you it allows there will be practical and tangible ways that that spirit comes out of you and that is often gonna be the words that you choose so obviously this is going to be if we are using words that are I don't want to say poetic because I feel like we're not gonna all start walking around like as if we're in like a Jane Austen book although I do literally live 20 minutes away from like where Jane Austen is from I I think that that is going to you know reflect in how you speak about other people how you speak about yourself how you speak about maybe people that you're not even the happiest with or you don't particularly like I think all of these areas are really going to show what is going on inside of here and have you ever seen that picture I'll put it right here if you if I can find it but it's it's a picture of an apple and it's like what everybody else sees but what they don't see on the back part of the apple is that it's like rotting away and I think that sometimes when we don't focus on what's going on inside of here then when we speak or we act you see really what's going on inside of here and you can see how ugly it, it is so I know that that tip isn't very practical but I do think it's really important the next thing that I want to speak to is speaking to how can you serve it's one of my favorite parts of of my husband and I are like wedding nuptials. So we did a foot washing ceremony as a part of our wedding and I loved it because if you, I mean, if you're Christian, I think you'll you'll understand the symbolism behind that. But if you're not Christian, let me explain to you. So back in like the ye old Jesus time days, <laughs> people, they were walking around in the desert, in the dirt. And so when you got to somebody's house, there would often be like a bowl of water for you to like wash feet with. And if you think about it, like back then, like oh feet were probably so disgusting with all the sand the dirt you know there probably wasn't proper footwear and so showing the act of service of like washing each other's feet is being like you know what I serve you and you serve me so some churches do this as a congregation and then some people I've seen do it as a part of their wedding and we chose to do it as a part of our wedding because really in marriage you are going to forever for the rest of your life if you believe in you know marriage I would hope so if you're getting married you are going to be serving one another and sometimes that's gonna to be in the ways that you might not like to do it and it might be dirty it might be mucky it might be gross but that's the commitment that you're making to one another now I do love when churches do this in regards to like doing it with other members of their congregation because in life we are supposed to serve one another that's not just like a biblical thing although it is biblical I think that when we can serve one another we really show the true character and the, the true beauty inside of us and life is so much more than what we care about ourselves does that make Sense. And so sometimes serving one another is just listening. Sometimes that means you're listening to a friend when they're down and out. Sometimes that means showing up at their house with, you know, some baked food goods because you know that they've had like a rough go at it sometimes that means sending them some flowers sometimes that means going and shoveling their driveway you are going to know what your friend needs but I think sometimes we have to pause and slow down in order to see these needs that we can serve for the people that we're doing life with so if you want to be more attractive be more thoughtful think of others see how you can serve and I promise you people are going to look at you as so attractive and you will feel attractive it will exude from you. All right, so let's get into some of the practical ways. I don't want to speak about just the surface level stuff on this channel, so you are going to get a mix of both. Although I am a beautician by trade, before I moved to England, I literally was working on clients all day, every day. And with that being said, 
we of course have to look at our physical facial aesthetics. Now, one of the ways that you can look more attractive without even trying is smiling. Let's be real, my friends. Resting bitch face is a thing. Pardon my French. And I have to tell you a quick story. I was about, I actually don't even think I was 18 years old yet. I had, I, I, I went out underage and I went to this bar and this guy was like trying to talk to me and I thought he was like being a perv and I was just like, ah, go away. And if you've seen one of my previous videos where I talk about being able to take a compliment, like that is a real thing. It is a real skill. <laughs> Let me tell you but this guy was saying to me like he just wanted to say like like you have a beautiful smile You should smile more and I've heard tons of girls get mad at when guys say that and it is annoying But at the same time they have a point I cannot tell you the countless amount of girls where I just see them and they look so unimpressed in like I wouldn't want to approach you I don't really think you look very attractive in that moment Like what are you being so stuck up for so I think understanding if you have resting bitch face being Self-aware about that and being conscious of that is going to get you so much much farther. The next thing that I want to talk about is colors and cuts. You might be thinking hair if you are a hairstylist like myself and that is true. The color and the cut of your hair is going to really take your look to the next level. I used to love doing more haircuts than I liked doing hair colors and the pure reason of that was because you can do the most beautiful color on someone's hair. If their hair is in bad condition, that color is going to look tragic. I look back at old pictures of myself and I may have just got my hair done but my hair looked fried. It looked fried. <laughs> I was gonna swear. I'm really trying not to swear you guys um, It looked really fried and it looked terrible So understanding that you need to have healthy hair You need to go get it cut no matter how much extensions you put in your hair It's still gonna look unhealthy and no matter how much you color your hair if your hair is not healthy It's still gonna look bad. So understanding the color that color and cuts matter now speaking of colors and cuts That is also going to play a part into the garments that you are wearing under Understanding what colors look nice on you and what colors don't look nice on you is going to take you far There are tons of online courses out there these days that will teach you color analysis So you can understand what tones look good on you what tones don't look good on you and so forth furthermore I think understanding the cut of an item understanding where it sits on you for me personally short not necessarily crop tops But sh uh, shirt and tops that are cut a little bit shorter that end right at my waist area is the worst worst thing for my body type because I have a very hourglass figure and if you know my bust is here and then my waist is here and then my hips start to flow out when a shirt ends right at the widest part of my body it accentuates the widest part of my body and then the clothes that I'm wearing doesn't look very figure flattering so understanding what your body type is and even if something is on trend per se and you really want to play part of that maybe opt out of that why subject the integrity of your overall look and your overall overall brand for a trend that won't even be around for a long time. Hopefully that makes sense. The next thing that I want to speak to is makeup. I think if you find yourself watching this channel, you probably understand the statement less is more and blending is key. I think depending on where you are in the world, you're going to see elegant or feminine women play to different characteristics in regards to their makeup. For example, when I look at a lot of American girls here on YouTube that are talking about being feminine, they love a smoky eye. <laughs> <laughs> and they love a smoky eye. It's colored, it's black, it's smoky. And then you might look at French women, they have more of a natural approach to things than maybe Italian women, they have more of a sexy and voluptuous way to things. So I think depending on where you are when you're watching this or what type of feminine woman you want to play to is going to reflect in the type of makeup that you do or you don't do. With that being said, I think that going into a makeup counter is great, but you guys, I don't know if you know this, but I, I have tried trained to be a makeup artist. It wasn't my favorite thing to do. I've taken three courses in it. However, just because someone works at a counter doesn't necessarily mean that they're qualified. I, there was actually, I don't know the YouTube channel. If I can find it, I will put it in the description box. But I saw this girl and she went to a makeup artist like at a counter and she found the makeup artist that had the worst ratings in her city and then went and had her makeup done by her and it was tragic. I think a lot of us may have gone into like a Sally's beauty and those girls that are dishing out you know beauty advice they're not qualified to do that now I think that there's certain counters 
that are going to have more integral people working at their counter, places like MAC, but even then, a lot of the time, their makeup is based off of like what they like. And I often feel like they're doing that in hopes of selling you, not necessarily in hopes of teaching you. I think that they're there to push product. They're not there to educate you. Furthermore, I have a better tip than just going to a makeup counter. And that is either hiring a, me a makeup artist that you have found online to come and teach you these things. Or if you don't live close to this person, you can hire them on Zoom. I know tons of makeup artists. One of my favorite ones being my friend Lisa, who I will list for you in the description box, who do Zoom consultations and do Zoom masterclasses where their purpose isn't to push the product to you. Their purpose is to teach you. And I absolutely love that. The other thing that I think is really important in regards to finding makeup that works for you is understanding like the style of makeup that you like. Do you like Instagram makeup? <laughs> Instagram makeup isn't very elegant and it's not very feminine in my opinion, but I find editorial makeup, makeup that was made for the runway where it's almost like that barely there makeup is going to look a lot more elegant. And that's one of the things that Lisa specializes in and that's why I love seeing how she applies makeup. Now the next thing that is gonna instantly make you more attractive is practicing gratitude. I think if you have lived certain life experiences and you understand what it's like to live like in maybe not fortunate positions, it allows it to set you up for success in regards to being more grateful and having more appreciation. Equally, we've all seen like the Hollywood actress that went from being nothing to all of a sudden being the like, best thing out there and you see how her expectations just start getting like more and more elaborate and more and more outrageous. I think when you practice gratitude, it stops you from getting to the outrageous personality type and it keeps you somewhere in the middle where you're not necessarily in the mindset of someone that doesn't have things and doesn't expect certain quality out of their life, but it stops you from being a spoiled brat. Furthermore, when you don't have that brattiness inside of it allows you to be more attractive because you are grateful and appreciative of the efforts that have been put in place to make your life experience that much more beautiful and that much more grand. Now the next point I've said in quite a few of my videos now and that is practicing slow and intentional living. Again, I've said it in other videos, but you often don't see classy and elegant women rushing around crazy like a chicken with, like, with their head detached from itself. Like my mom used to say this to me all the time, Nicole, if your head wasn't attached to you, you would lose it. And <laughs> I now see what she means. I think that there is a grace about moving slowly and intentionally through life that will look more attractive than somebody that is like eating on the go with a bagel in their mouth, doing their mascara on the train. I've been that woman and I've seen that woman and it doesn't look very feminine or attractive. Last but not least, I've already touched on it, but I do wanna reiterate it, but less is more. Let's tone things down. No one needs to see your highlight from space. Your hair doesn't need to be back home to the hills. The most beautiful things are the things that look effortless. And I think if you can really cultivate that in regards to your clothing, in regards to your hair, in regards to your makeup, in regards to your scent, my goodness, my friends, I don't think it smells or comes off very feminine if I can smell you coming down the street. That is in regards to smoke. That is in regards to perfume. So really be aware of the statement that less is more. And I'm sure you will be always considered as feminine and attractive and beautiful. Anyways, my friend, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear any feedback from you in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love if you took the time to consider doing so. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.